it's Kirsty. I'm back with a reading vlog today. Um, I didn't vlog last week. Um, I just wasn't in the mood for it because I wasn't really reading much. So I didn't really see the point in vlogging, doing a reading vlog if I wasn't vlog reading. Um, I did finish a book last week, um, but I didn't enjoy it. So I'm not really going to talk about it. Um, it was just not my cup of tea. So I'm just, I don't really see the point in like talking about a book that I didn't enjoy. Um, when I wasn't like filming myself reading it, if that makes sense. So, uh, yeah. So, where am I at right now? Um, so I'm currently reading um, Mirage by Samaya Daoud. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think I heard Fadwa pronouncing it like that before. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's really good. What the fuck was that? Oh my God. I think a glass just fell over. It gave me the fright of my life. Um, so, I didn't realize this is a sci-fi when I like picked it up because I thought it was a I thought it was a fantasy because I I like I've said I don't really read synopses and stuff I was I just thought it was a fantasy but it's a sci-fi and doesn't bring my like feelings about it down or anything like that um it's just a different genre than what I expected so um this is about a girl who lives um on a moon of a planet that has been colonized basically and when she is supposed to be having like her kind of coming of age ceremony um she gets taken by the crown um to do something and she doesn't know what it is um and she ends up in the kind of palace um and she's there because she looks exactly like the crown princess whose life is in danger because no one likes her <laughs> I don't know if no one likes her but like they, she's very unliked so um she has to impersonate her at times where it's possible that she could try like they could be assassinated so she has to train to become like her and that's all I really know so far um but I'm really enjoying it the writing style is really nice it's really well paced um yeah I'm midway through the um, audiobook of Hurts Who Want You by um, Alicia Rye, which I am loving. Um, the narration's really good. Um, so there's two narrators, one for the man's part and one for the woman's part. Um, and they're both really good. They both like work really well. Um, I just love that series by Alicia Rye, like Hurts to, Hurt, Hurts to Want You, Hate to Love You, Wrong to Need You. They're all so good. I love them all. I just love Alicia Rye. Her writing's just so good. Um, and yeah, I have not like I've barely just picked up an ebook. I'll talk about that more when I actually like start reading it because I've like virtually read like two percent. Um, um, and then today I kind of started reading a few more chapters of Heaven Officials Blessing. I can't remember the the opinion like the Chinese of it. Um, it's, but it's like the initials are TGCF. You may see people talking about that on Twitter sometimes. Um, which is by Mo Xiang Tong Shu. Um and yeah, I'm enjoying that. It's the same author as um Muda Zushi, uh or the untamed um Chen Ying, um that whole kind of thing. Um so yeah, I, this has been like a work in progress for me since like February because like the writing's so dense and it's kinda hard to get into my brain sometimes so I go through like phases of picking up so at the moment I'm like oh I want to read it um so yeah um I've just done some editing on my vlog from like three weeks ago <laughs> I need to like catch up um it's because I was I had like a whole bunch of like sit down videos instead of vlogs that I had done so I wanted to get those out because they were faster to do whereas this one's like so yeah that's it I haven't really been doing much um just kind of working, plodding along. Oh, something I've been doing. Um, so a couple of vlogs ago, I was talking about how I was, um, I'd picked up cross stitch. Um, so I finished that one, which you saw in the vlog. And then I think I picked one up. I don't know if I vlogged about it. I haven't got to that part of my footage yet. Um, but basically I started, I picked up some designs on Etsy, um, PDF designs that I was like excited to start. So I am now like here. Can you guess what it is? I'm sure you can. It's quite obviously Pikachu. However, you can't guess the full extent because there is more to this than just Pikachu, as you can tell from this weird stuff surrounding Pikachu. 
So yeah, I'm really enjoying cross stitch. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, it's like nice kind of like I like knitting, but it's kind of too warm for me to be doing knitting at the moment. Um, although I'm like midway through a jumper for my best friend, which I need to finish. Um, but then when it get when I finish it, it'll probably be colder again. So at least she's not wearing a jumper in the summer. <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, that's why I'm enjoy I'm like enjoying cross stitch because it's like a craft that's like not hot. Also, my gran who died last year, um, she was a major cross stitcher. Like she's like, like when we were, my parents were going through our house, they found like a box just full of cross stitch that she'd done, and they don't know when she did it. Maybe like thirty years ago, and there's just like these really intricate designs and stuff. So it obviously runs in the blood. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna read a little bit of Mirage right now, and then I think go to bed. It's like nearly eleven. It's like between half ten and eleven. So, yeah, and I've got work tomorrow on Monday morning. But I think I've got some packages maybe coming this week, so that'll be some excitement in the vlog. I don't really have anything else planned this week. Um, so, yeah, on to reading. It's an unboxing! <laughs> I ordered some books from Waterstones the other day because there was a book I wanted that was signed and I wanted to get free shipping, so I was like... So I'm buying, I'm spending £12 on this one book and then I'm going to spend a further eight just to make sure I get free shipping. Which is, like, I could just pay for the shipping and I would have spent less money, but I get more books this time. So yeah, uh, this is packed tight. So we've got, so we've got Loveless by Alice Osman, which I'm excited for. I've seen a lot of hype for and yeah buzzing to read this one eventually although I've got like a backlog of Alice Oseman books to read so yeah and then oh okay um it's If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha and this is signed Pretty. um yeah I've been excited uh, Kate told me this one was like they had signed copies of it on her in her Waterstone so I was like oh so I went and like checked on Waterstones online and they had it signed so I was like yes this is one of those ones that's got like French flaps. Not a massive lover of French flaps, but it's fine. Like, of the three kind of special things you get in a book, like my favourite's sprayed edges, then French flaps, then I fucking hate deckled edges. So French flaps are okay. <laughs> so yeah, exciting. Hello, I am now up to page 200 in Mirage. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's really engaging. Um... I love like the vibe of it because it's like sci-fi but it feels fantasy um so I'm enjoying that it's kind of different um so yeah I've got 100 pages to go I want to get it read tonight I'm really enjoying it I want to finish it I want to like see where it goes so yeah that's my plan is to finish it tonight I'm going to go have a bath and read this in the bath I know blasphemy but I'm actually quite good about my reading in the bath like I generally don't like get water on the pages and stuff so I'm gonna do that um, I'm about to have a cheesecake before I do that whilst the water is filling up but um, I've had a pyjama day today because I just like didn't want to get dressed <laughs> because I'm working at home like everyone at, well not everyone but like a lot of people are and I was just like no one's gonna see me so I'm putting on I'm leaving my pyjamas on I want a self-care day so pyjamas bath cheesecake it's just it's all happening it's all wet but I'm out of the bath I read like 37 pages in the bath good time 60 to go yeah I'm really enjoying it like things are like heating up things are getting like oh stuff's about to happen it's like really exciting um I really like um Amani the main character I think she's like a really good main character because she's kind of doing things to like help her get through life being um pretending to be the princess but she's also like she's like doing stuff that like goes against her nature because she's trying to be the princess um but then she's also like trying to work to undermine the crown and it's just like she's kind of having this major inner conflict kind of stuff with like what she's doing and it's really interesting to read I like the princess Maram she's kind of like um 
she's mean and horrible and like not the nicest but she's also a teenager and is obviously heavily influenced by the world around her so like having a manny around her who is like kind of telling her I can see the beginnings of her like changing the way she thinks and that's really interesting for me to read so I'm enjoying that and I like Idris he's cool I think we shall find out so I realized that I hadn't actually um mentioned I think I hadn't mentioned that um I finished uh Hurts to Love You? Is it Hurts to Love You? I literally cannot remember the title of these books. It's so bad because they all are such similar like names. I just forget them all. Anyway, I finished Hurts to Love You by Alicia Rye today on audiobook. Really enjoyed it. It was really good. I love that series. It's just so good. Um, It wasn't like an absolute favourite in terms of romance simply because I felt like um the dialogue was a bit cringy at times. Um. I don't know if that was because I was listening to an audiobook so it was more obvious to me when it was like cringy dialogues. So I was just like, oh my god. Um, or if it was just because that was just how the dialogue was in the book and it was kind of cringy dialogue. Um, I, would, I don't know if I would have noticed it on ebook or not, um, but I definitely noticed it on audiobook. So yeah, um, but still really enjoyed it. I loved the romance. I thought they were really good together. And I loved like the family drama. I was just like living for it. Um, the last like two to three hours on the audio because I was just like oh my god what's gonna happen all these twists and turns it was just like I was just like oh my god <laughs> like there's a big scene where it all like kicks off and I was just like oh my god this is crazy so yeah I really enjoyed that once um I recommend the whole series if you're into romance I love Alicia Rye's writing this is like such a good series and like so it features characters in the first novel getting married which I just loved because they're like oh they're my babes and then it's also got it's also it's also got characters from um her one of her other books um what's it called the right swipe um which I loved and I read last year um one of the characters has like a cameo in this so that was nice I was like yes my queen so yeah um uh I am getting through mirage i'm nearly there um i'm like i've got like 40 pages to go it's midnight i'm gonna get it done before one i promise <laughs> i'm doing it come on um but i really want to finish it because it's like ah, i'm so close to the end i just want to know what's gonna happen so yeah oh my god my arm's just like called amani her sister and i'm just like oh my god i just i love them Oh, how do we evil? Ah. Oh my gosh, I finished it. Ah. I can't believe the way that ended. Like, what the heck? Oh, it's just so good. It was just, I really enjoyed the bond between Amani and Maram. I felt like they were just, I just really enjoyed their scenes together and like kind of seeing how they both kind of learned from each other I think I felt like um obviously Moran kind of was like her character growth was through learning um from Amani because she's just never been um like outside of the world she knows um she's basically been like kind of locked up in a way like not locked up like she hasn't actually physically been locked up but like she's just kind of been kept in like the bubble of the crown and stuff and talking to Amani really opened her eyes and I really enjoyed like reading that and seeing her go from being this really harsh and br brutal um person who doesn't understand anything to like l like becoming a lot softer and a lot more trusting I really enjoyed that um I liked this book a lot I liked I liked the vibe of it it felt like I think I mentioned this before but it felt very like it was sci-fi and very clearly sci-fi because they talk about like droids and like being in space and stuff but then it also had like a fantasy feel to it like it didn't like it didn't feel overly sci-fi-esque because like like I love sci-fi but like sometimes I feel like it, you can, it gets bogged down in kind of the technology and stuff whereas this one was kind of just like it was just part of the world and there wasn't much explaining to it which I actually enjoyed like I feel like some people might not enjoy that there's less like explaining to the 
kind of technological stuff but it's like it didn't need it in my opinion it just felt like it kind of flowed because it was just like it just like there was droids there was data pads and stuff like that but like those are all kind of things that we understand already so it didn't need explaining what needed explaining was the politics and like the brutal way that um people were colonized and stuff um so yeah i liked that i liked that kind of vibe to it it was really interesting so i am excited to read the sequel um i really want to know where this goes because man it ended on such a cliffhanger like what is going to happen and also like i've heard the sequel court of lions is um sapphic and i'm like who 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 is going to be the sapphic pairing is it maram i'm like ah what's gonna happen so yeah i'm like excited um, I kind of hope that the sequel has dual POV, like Amani and Maram, but I'm not sure. I don't know if that, like, obviously I'm not, I don't know, but yeah. So, yeah, really enjoyed this one. I would recommend it. I think everyone should read it. Um, I think it's quite underrated. Hey, it's another day. Um, that rhymed. <laughs> um, so I, um... I haven't read anything today yet, um, but I've had a very productive evening. Um, I um, posted a blog post. I captioned a third of my next vlog to go up, and then I also like tidied and cleaned most of my kitchen. I still have some stuff to do, but um, it's as best as I was gonna get tonight because I didn't have like too much time. Um, Jess is coming over tomorrow for some socially distanced um food so yeah i'm really excited about that my best pal i love her to bits she's just i love her she makes my life like so much better so yeah so i'm about to like get down and into bed um the the next physical book i am picking up is parachutes by kelly yang oh, like every book i don't know much about this so i'll give like a kind of i'll give a summary once i'm actually further into it um but what I do know is that it's going to be a hard-hitting contemporary book um, about kind of, I think, like, not, like, sisterhood and, like, why did I say that? Like, that sisterhood, um, about, like, sisterhood and, like, um, I think a found family, but also, I think, um, like, kind of immigration kind of stuff. Like, I think it's about a girl who, had, like, her parents sent her from China to study in America in school. So she's not like immigrating for forever, but she's immigrating for the period of time she's in school, I think. So it's kind of dealing with that and the issues that come with that. Um, and what I do know is that the beginning of the book comes with a page with content warnings, which we love to see. Love a good content warning. Um, and this one says, this book contains scenes depicting sexual harassment and rape. So that's going to be a very good reading experience, I think. <laughs> no, I am actually quite excited to start this one. I like I was excited when I first heard about it and unfortunately I just didn't have time to read it until now, but I am actually really excited to read it. It sounds like an interesting premise, so um I also know that um the like depictions of sexual harassment and rape come very heavily from are influenced very heavily from the author's actual life. I've seen her talk about it on Twitter, so I think it's going to be really, like, impactful of a read. Um, but I know it's going to be quite hard to read, so, yeah. Excited, but, like, uh, It's like that nervous excitement of a book that you know is going to hit you right in the feels, but it's going to be, like, a good hit in the feels, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Hello. Again, sorry about the fan noise. Um, so I forgot to say, um, this is gifted to me by Harper360YA. Oh my god, look at the cover, it's so pretty. Anyway, so I'm literally like, I've read a page, but like, and this is not a spoiler because it's literally the first page, but it's talking about um, how um, her dad has a mistress and he's like, his mistress tried to add her on WeChat, which is just like, what the fuck? 
Hello, it's Wednesday. Um, I got myself a Tim Hortons. I'm excited. Um, basically, I'm mostly excited because I got a raspberry iced tea and I've missed iced tea so much. That's like the one thing. I also got some stuff in the mail today. I got some, I got an order from Body Shop that I ordered. So like I got some soaps, I got some hand sanitizer, some mango and coconut. I got some ginger shampoo for dandruff. Hopefully it'll sort out that scalp thing I was talking about a few weeks ago. And then I got my moisturizer, which is the best moisturizer. Um, and then I also got a book from My Kind of Book. They sent me Boy Queen, um, which I already have a proof of, but they sent me a full copy. So yeah, yeah, I'm about to have my lunch. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm just so excited for iced tea. <laughs> I sad. I also got some Timbits, so I'm excited. Although it's a mixed pack, so who knows what flavour they'll get. Hopefully, I've got some of those Kruger ones, the ones that are like batter, like, and at, like more like a dumpling kind of batter. Hello. So, it's Thursday. Didn't vlog yesterday because Jess came over after work and we had some nice social distance dinner with each other and it was just very nice and... So yeah, we had a nice dinner last night. We had like an Indian takeaway. It was really good. Um, I had bread pakora, which I've never had before and was like, what the hell is this? But new discovery, it's really nice, interesting. But I mean, it's just fried bread. So obviously it's gonna be good because fried bread is the best. Um, I have some exciting news. Um, I wasn't sure if I should talk about this in a vlog because I don't really want to be talking about it until it's like, like I've got, I've got it and it's, settled but um I have a cat reserved um and because my vlogs at the moment I'm running about two three weeks behind so by the time this is going live the cat should hopefully be settled um so I could maybe put this in my vlog and show you the kind of process of it um but we'll see I'm not currently telling anyone apart from like I've told like a few close friends and stuff just because I'm like oh my god I'm getting a cat um so yeah I'm really excited um her name is Hope well on the website it's Miss Hope but I really don't like that name like what what Miss Hope it's a stupid name for a cat so her name her name is going to be Hope um she's black and white domestic short hair and she's very fat <laughs> And she's like seven years old, but like on her vet thing, it literally just kept saying overweight, the poor thing. Um, but hopefully that'll like, she'll lose a bit of weight when she's like, um, more settled out. I think cats, I think animals will put on weight when they're stressed out. And she's obviously had a bit of a tumultuous time because she's up for adoption. So yeah, I'm getting a cat next week. Hopefully on Friday, she'll be here. So I'm so excited. She's so cute. Like, oh, she just looks like an absolute sweetheart. And apparently she's like really, really like, um, affectionate and will like sit on your lap and just wants cuddles all the time. So I'm so excited. Um, in terms of reading, I haven't really read anything because obviously I was, um, I had Jess over and then I was in work today. So I'm just kind of, I posted my vlog today and then I was like sitting on the couch and then I was like I'm really like I didn't even have a proper dinner today I'm not like hungry which is weird for me and normally I normally eat a lot um but yeah but um yeah so I haven't I've read a chapter of parachutes I think I didn't even update that but I read a chapter of parachutes I'm liking the vibe of like the writing style so I'm excited to continue it but what's more important to me right now is a book I'm reading on my kindle um the Secret of You and Me um, by someone, I literally can't remember, um, but it's part of a blog tour I'm on next week so I need to like get that done because it's on the 29th that that's happening and today is the 23rd so I've got six days to finish reading it. I'm at 21% so 80% and your view in the space of six days. I can do it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and like read a fair amount of that tonight so that I've got like a lot of time like more time to read it if that makes sense like I'm not as pressured and it's coming up the weekend I don't have any plans on the weekend hello um so it's Saturday I I made a huge pets at home order the other day so that's exciting that's supposed to be coming on Monday so I'll be like 
maybe I'll do a, a wee unboxing. But, um, I'm just um, doing some reading and stuff. I'm about halfway through the book I need to read for my um, blog to post, The Secret of You and Me. Um, so I'm just going to read that for a bit and I just want to get this finished today so I can move on to the other books I've got to read. I've just got so many books to read um, and I need to like, I'm trying to get a move on with it because obviously since I'm adopting a cat on like, the end of the week I won't really have much time after, like for a few days after that so I'm trying to get ahead of myself a bit um, so yeah um, I've been doing a little bit of my cross stitch it's finally taking some shape can we Pikachu I wonder if you can guess what it's gonna be so yeah um, last night I I watched The Kissing Booth 2 which was a mess and I just why does that series exist? I know I'm one of the people that's making it exist by watching it, but oh my god, it's just so bad. Like, oh. it was basically the plot of P.S. I Still Love You, and I was just like, why, why? <laughs> so dumb. Um, and why was it two hours? There is no need for a movie of that like genre kind of style to be two hours. So, <laughs> what a mess. Um, so yeah, so I watched that and then I started watching The Babysitter's Club, which is so good. Um, I never read The Babysitter's Club's books when I was younger, but um, I just like decided to put it on because I was just like, fuck it, I'll put this on, it sounds cute. Um, and oh my god, I just, I love it so much. It's so good, like, oh, all the girls are so wonderful and it's just got so many, like, good storylines that like make sense and like like there's an episode where there's like a wee girl who is trans and she like she has to go to the hospital like Marianne who's one of the girl the babysitters has to take um the wee girl to the hospital and the doctor and nurse keep using the wrong pronouns and she's just like no and she goes and has a full-on like she like berates them basically for using the wrong pronouns and I was just like oh my god the fact that this is a kids tv show and they're like oh it's just so good to see a kids tv show talking about this kind of stuff and then there's like a wee boy later on who's like oh yeah I really fancied this boy at, uh, at camp or whatever and it's just like it's just a thing like no one's like oh my god you're gay it's just like he just says it and it's fine and no one make no one makes a big deal no one says anything it's just like okay and I love that and even talked about like Japanese internment camps at one point and I was just like this show is so good like this kind of stuff is so important for kids I just it makes me so happy that this is like stuff that's in a kids tv show now like had I had this years ago it would have made such a difference in my development like like I think I'm like I think I've grown up in quite a good way like my parents have like informed me about things and I've learned about things that a lot of kids don't learn about but I, there's obviously still so much room for develop more like education and it's just so nice to see like kids learning about stuff that some of the things I had to go and learn about myself like I didn't learn about trans issues when I was younger I barely learned about like the difference between gay and straight when I was in school so it's just so nice to see this kind of stuff so yeah so I was enjoying that I've got two episodes left to go but I kind of decided to take a break so I can actually read this book so so it's about a woman who has gone back to her childhood home um and because her dad has died um and she hasn't been there in like 18 years when she left at like or 19 years she left at 18 um where basically because her dad found out she's gay so she ran away well not gay she's bi um but like her dad thought she was gay basically um and so she ran away to join the army um but she's back in town and she sees her former best friend um for the first time in 19 years and it's just like it's like former lovers rekindling flames and all the kind of messy emotions that come with that when you're like fully blown adults <laughs> so like they're like closer to their 40s so obviously like they kind of went through their kind of queer awakenings and stuff like a much earlier time than I did obviously so like so like 10 years before kind of my 
awakening back in like the really early 2000s late 90s um or maybe it was the late 90s I think it said something about 1999 so that kind of time when things were just really weren't accepted as much as they are now um especially because this was set in like kind of um uh what's the word like rural texas um so yeah it's quite messy but it makes sense why it's messy like there's a fair amount of there's a fair amount of cheating and infidelity and i like i generally am not a massive fan of that but i feel like it works in the context of this story because you are dealing with like two women who like you're dealing with queer relationships and I think when it comes to queer relationships when things aren't as accepted um it's different to just like people out in the open cheating if that makes sense so yeah it's an interesting story so far I think I'm like I'm enjoying it but I think because there's quite a lot of heavy stuff I'm like putting it down every now and again just because I need a breather the book cover really doesn't like let on to how heavy some of the topics are in this because it's really like there's a lot of like forced closeting and it's just a lot to deal with I think. Um, Hello so I finished um, The Secret of Me and You this morning. I think that's what it's called. I keep forgetting what it's called um, but anyway I finished that this morning so yeah. Um, it was a really interesting book like it's not the kind of book I would normally read because I went into it thinking it was going to be like this really like kind of I don't know cute southern romance kind of thing but it it was it was a lot heavier than that there is like I would say there's like serious trigger and content warnings for like racism homophobia um alcoholism post-traumatic stress disorder like it's just it's a lot more than I was like anticipating in terms of like that kind of stuff so my thoughts are really that like it's an interesting book it's kind of out my comfort comfort zone because it's dealing with people who are like closer to 40 and generally when I read a romance book and or a, a book that has romance in it it's generally people who are a similar age to me or maybe slightly younger so it was a bit like out of my comfort zone and it was interesting because it's kind of one of those books that like um because it dealt with like two queer women who grew up in like the 90s um in the middle of like backwater texas america um they've got so much like internalized trauma from um not being able to come out um safely and their parents like telling them they're evil and threatening them with like conversion therapy um so it's caused them to navigate relationships in a weird way um and it just wasn't really what I was expecting um it was definitely an interesting book I don't know if I'd read something like this again but that it is what it is like it's good to read stuff outside of your lane sometimes um yeah it was just really interesting like how many times can I say the word interesting um if you're looking for like a nice happy romance this is not it this is like a it's quite brutal and um difficult I think like it's quite it is difficult and it's dealing with like um topics that women do have to deal with if they grew up in a time when it wasn't accepted or as it wasn't as accepted as it is now um being gay and being bisexual um and the effects that that can have on the way you come into relationships and the way you deal with your life and um, there is quite a lot of cheating in this book and infidelity um which I generally don't like in books but it made sense in this book because that's how the characters um ha like the traumas of their past um have manifested in the way that they deal with attraction to people um it was a read <laughs> um so I've got on my blog tour post going live for that on Wednesday I think and I'm the first date which oh I hate being the first date in a vlog tour but yeah so I need to write my review for that like tonight tomorrow um so so that's the end of my reading vlog um uh, thank you very much for watching um I'm going to go to the supermarket um after this and go buy some cat litter and some cat food because that's happening hopefully um so yeah uh thank you very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed um yeah
be sure to like and leave a comment if you would like to leave a comment um and yeah subscribe if you enjoyed my content and if you enjoyed seeing my face